Have you ever been in a coding interview and had no idea how to answer the question you were asked? Chances are, to get the correct answer, you first had to pick the correct data structure. And a lot of the time, this choice of data structure can be the difference between getting hired and not. So today we're going to run down some of the top data structures you need to know for your code interviews. What's up, it's Kalen from Kite, the AI coding assistant that helps you code faster and smarter. Understanding data structures is a key skill for being a software engineer, so it makes sense that you can expect to use them in your technical interviews. In just a moment, we'll go over some of the key data structures in Python that you can use in your code interviews. There will also be a link to a lead code question for each of these data structures in the description below. Now let's kick this off with arrays. Arrays are just sequences of values. In Python, arrays are equivalent to lists. And for arrays, appending and getting a value costs O of 1, while inserting and deleting costs O of n, and searching costs O of n as well, unless the array is sorted. So any problems that deal with a sequence of values of the same type, an array is typically a good place to start. There are four important questions to ask when working with arrays. Number one, is the array sorted? If it is, then look for a way to use a binary search algorithm. Number two, are there duplicate elements in the array? If there are, then your answer could be significantly altered. Number three, what happens if the array is empty? It is always important to check this so your code doesn't break. Number four, are there special cases for arrays with two to three elements? Sometimes an algorithm needs to be altered in order to work with arrays of two to three elements. Next, let's take a look at linked lists. Linked lists also represent a sequence of values. In Python, a linked list can be implemented like this. A linked list consists of nodes. Each node has a value and a reference to the next node. In this example, the head node's value is one and is pointing to the next node whose value is two. Getting a node from the list costs O of N. Deletion and insertion costs O of one and searching costs O of N. There are three tips to keep in mind when working with linked lists. Number one, since it holds sequential data like an array, try to think if whether using a linked list instead of an array will improve the solution and vice versa. Two, will the solution change if there are only one or two nodes? And three, can the solution be solved without using an extra space? A lot of times with linked lists, the references to the other nodes just need to be changed as opposed to creating a new list. The next data structures we will look at are stacks and queues. A stack is the last in first out data structure. In a stack, the last element that is pushed on top is the first element that comes out when the stack is popped. While a queue is a first in first out data structure. So in a queue, the first element that is pushed on is the first that's popped off. A stack and queue can both be implemented with a Python list. Append is used on both of these to push an element on. To pop the stack, pop must be called on the first index, while for queue, the regular pop function can be called. Getting a specific element from a stack or queue costs O of n, but inserting and deleting from a stack or queue costs O of 1. There are three tips to keep in mind when working with stacks and queues. First, use a queue whenever elements need to be extracted in the order that they went in. Second, use a stack whenever elements need to be extracted in the opposite order that they went in. And finally, third, know how to implement a queue using two stacks. Next, let's take a look at hash tables. A hash table is used to store key value pairs. In Python, a hash table can be represented using a dictionary. For a hash table, search, insertion, and deletion all cost O of 1. Because of this, hash tables are very important data structures to be using during an interview. There are two tips to keep in mind when working with hash tables. Number one, use a hash table when a problem deals with counting the occurrences of certain elements. Number two, use a hash table when searching for an element that is commonly used in an operation. Next, let's move on to heaps. A heap is a data structure that returns either the max or min element in a collection of elements depending on the implementation. To use a heap in Python, you'll need to import heap q. This is a module that can heapify or make a heap out of any list. Insertion, deletion, and extraction all cost O of log n with heaps. The most important thing for heaps is to look if the problem is asking for the top k highest values or the top k lowest values. These should be major indications that the interviewer is looking for a heap to be used. Before we talk about our last data structure, I want to take a moment to talk more about Kite, a free AI coding assistant that will help you code smarter. Whether you're new to Python or already a pro, you should try out Kite as your autocomplete to reduce your keystrokes and save time programming. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. If you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. 
The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. Finally, let's go over binary trees. A binary tree is a data structure where a given node in the tree has a value and it references at most two other nodes. These two nodes are also referred to as its children. Unless a node is the root, it is the child of another node. There's also a binary search tree and it has the same conditions as a binary tree except for how the child nodes are determined. In a binary search tree, if a child node's value is greater than its parents, it is the right child. And if a child's value is less than its parent, then it is the left child. Get, search, insertion, and deletion all cost O of log n in a binary search tree. There are three tips to keep in mind when working with binary trees. Number one, is there some inherent ordering in the data's values? If so, then using a tree might be a good option for you. Number two, if a question involves a binary search tree, then the solution should most likely be faster than O of n. And three, if the elements should be compared, then a binary search tree might be a good option. All right, now you should have a better idea about when to use each data structure and what comes with using it. As a next step, you should try out some of the interview questions that are linked in the description to get a better feel for using each data structure described in today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel as we'll have more code interview tips coming your way. And finally, don't forget to check out the Kite AI Autocomplete plugin. It's free and the link's in the description below.